This is New Hampshire's Class of 2020, celebrating our seniors. Senior year, the final 180 days of classes, of competition, of performances, before heading out on your own. The last rite of passage, donning a cap and gown, walking across the stage for a hard-earned diploma. But this was a year none of us could have imagined. A global pandemic bringing life as we know it to a screeching halt. The first Granite Stater to test positive for COVID-19 is being monitored right now in home quarantine. And then the news, students, teachers, and families across the state feared. Beginning tomorrow, students will not show up at school. Dining room tables transformed into classrooms overnight. Whiteboards and classmates replaced with computer screens and siblings. But just like the granite our state is known for, you are resilient and strong. And you've made the most of an unfair situation by lending a helping hand, keeping the competition going and proving the show can and will go on. And while this may not be the senior year any of us could have imagined, you still deserve to be celebrated because you did it. Congratulations, seniors. You should be so proud. I wish you a lot of success. You persevered against all odds. And even though they aren't the memories you expected to make this year, it's a senior year all of us will always remember. And good evening, New Hampshire, and especially the seniors of the class of 2020. I'm Mike Chair. And I'm Jennifer Vaughn. Thank you for joining us as we recognize our graduates. We're so fortunate to be joined by some of you via Zoom, representing all regions of the state. And while it's not the pomp and circumstance you expected or deserve for completing 12 years of hard work, since September, and especially since March 15th, we have been fortunate to speak to many of you to talk about your accomplishments and cover your stories. It's safe to say you are a wonderful, resilient group and you give us hope. Tonight, as the mom of a senior, I am so happy to recognize my daughter Darby and all of us are honored to celebrate you. I think that I was most excited for our MACLAC game um, against Londonderry. I was excited for, you know, upcoming events like banquet, a graduation at the end of the year. That's always, that's always every student's um, goal is making it to graduation. Just like so happy that it was my final year, but like so sad at the same time because it, it just went by so fast and I made so many new friends. And I, I really thought this was going to be my year. I thought this was going to be like the best year of my life. The things I was definitely most excited for about senior year were prom and graduation and walking across the graduation stage and hearing my family and friends clap for me. Like everyone brags about senior year, everyone's always excited for senior year. Junior year was definitely the hardest, so coming into senior year, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're seniors, like everyone wants to be the seniors. I was really excited, especially with soccer in the fall, and I was looking forward to all the senior activities ahead. I was definitely really excited. I was excited to get started making new memories my friends and making the best out of our last year. I was most excited about being able to attend all my senior events along with prom and graduation. Just say bye to everybody, I think. I didn't know how like how many people I was so close to in high school until I realized that I was gone from them. I think about this a lot actually. I think about the the things I would have said to my teachers and the way I would have tried harder with my friends and probably you know made more of an effort to to say the last goodbyes, I guess. If I could go back to March 13th. I would talk to all my teachers, enjoy my last lunch in the cafeteria with friends, and reminisce on all the memories created at London Dairy High School. And I kind of wish that we all got to see each other again, especially during finals, like at the end of finals every year, like it's so nice outside. And it's kind of like your childhood ended early and you just have to move on with life. If I could go back to March 13th, I would have thanked all my teachers like immediately because I took the best ones my second semester and I would have gone to the school store and gotten the cookies because everyone knows how amazing they are. Good luck and I wish you all the best for what's to come. It 
it's definitely been like a, a learning curve, I guess, to um, be more mature. And like, I have no one's here to force me to do it, so I have to do it. We're still thriving and we're, we're learning, we're making it. Even though we might not have a huge ceremony to prove it, um, we all still graduated. This whole experience has definitely made me more grateful because on March 13th, everyone thought, oh, two week vacation until everything settles down. But no, my senior year was canceled. So you never know what tomorrow's gonna bring. And one thing this pandemic has taught us is that even the smallest voices can have a big impact. But when you have a big voice, it's important to use it for good. And if you've ever participated in FIRST Robotics, then you know our first guest. New Hampshire inventor Dean Kamen has been instrumental in helping our state secure millions of dollars worth of prote personal protective equipment for our frontline workers. And he wanted to share a few words of advice with you. Hello and congratulations to all the students in all the high schools in the graduating class of 2020 here in New Hampshire. My name is Dean Kamen. I don't know most of you, and I'm sure most of you don't know me, but I was asked to try to come up with a message at a time that seemed maybe a little uh, seriously down, uh, which would help make uh, this particular graduation season a little bit better. Here I am uh, in my own shop in my house, like all of you, having to keep my social distance. I'm not complaining, it's a beautiful shop. And I chose to do this video standing next to one of the clocks I make that if you're involved in first in any way, you've seen these. Each year I make one to be the prize for the winning first team. They all have the same gearing, but this clock's a little different. I started making a clock that actually, that second hand, the minute hand, the whole clock is running three times faster than any clock you'd use. But the reason it keeps perfect time is it spends 40 seconds, two thirds of its time going forward, two minutes and 40 seconds, but it goes back one step in 20 seconds every minute. Why, you might ask, did I do that and why is it relevant to this time? I spent my whole life with people telling me, I'm trying to do too many things, I'm trying to work on too many things, and for every two steps forward, I'll take one step backward. I'm sure you've all heard that phrase, and it's true. I make a lot more mistakes than most of the people I know because I am trying to do a lot of things and I have a sense of urgency about doing them all fast. But I finally decided to take that old statement, for every two steps forward you take one step back, and turn that lemon into lemonade and it's the advice I'd like to give all of you today. Mathematically, plus two, minus one, and minus one, plus two are the same. So I'd like to tell all of you, for every step that we all take backward, and this coronavirus is a big step backward, if we take two steps forward, we'll stay synchronized with the world, we'll get three times as much experience, we'll learn from mistakes, and we'll move on. As long as we stay positive, as long as we're optimistic, as long as we continue to communicate and cooperate, I know it may seem very hard right now and disappointing that you don't get to do the official graduation. But I think when you look back at this graduation versus most people that get to look back at theirs, yours will be very memorable. I'd also like to point out, maybe on the lighter side, that realistically, you students shouldn't feel that you've lost a lot. You got the important part the education, you're graduating, you're moving on in life, whether it's to a career or the college. 
The graduation, let's be clear, was really mostly about your parents and your grandparents. Think about it. From the time you were a little kid, they liked to dress you up in silly outfits and put silly birthday hats on you. That's what parents do. And the ultimate version of that, as you grow up and you're about to become the next generation of leaders, they like to dress you up in a silly cap and a silly gown and be very proud of you. They're going to miss the opportunity to have that great event. Take care of them. But remember, the important part of this education you've got, that didn't go away. And maybe more importantly, remember that this should be a very potent learning experience by which we all maybe redouble our efforts to stay focused on solving important problems and working with each other, particularly the next generation of leaders is going to have to be more capable of moving more quickly to deal with ever more complex issues. And this is a time to really think about that. So whatever you're planning on doing, I wish you a lot of success. I hope you will somehow stay involved with FIRST and maybe come work with me on some of our important projects. But to each and every one of you, I, I sincerely congratulate you and uh, I am confident uh, that you will look back at, at this period and it will be one small step backward, but you will take all of you collectively two steps forward. Congratulations again and have a good life. Throughout the hour, we'll be hearing from students from each region of New Hampshire. And yes, we've all heard the saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But that's exactly what our first senior did. When she suddenly lost the ability to walk, this soccer player instead learned to row, never letting life get in the way of her love of learning and sports. Representing the Seacoast region, here is Gabby McNeil from St. Thomas Aquinas High School. From the beautiful shores of the seacoast, congratulations to my classmates at St. Thomas Aquinas in Dover and all of New Hampshire's graduating class of 2020. As New Hampshire's senior class, we are entering the world at a time when kindness, compassion, and empathy are the attributes most needed in our society. As children, we are taught to be kind and treat others the way we want to be treated. From this, we learn to trust others and believe in all that is good about humanity. A walk through Prescott Park is proof of the positivity and goodwill that we have been surrounded by while growing up in New Hampshire. In fourth grade, we learned facts about the Granite State, but the greatest lesson was the one learned on top of Mount Washington where my classmates gathered together and shielded one another against the pounding rain and driving wind that threatened to knock us over. United, we were stronger than any unforeseen force that could come our way. Recently, we have all witnessed that life can change in an instant. I learned this lesson firsthand during my sophomore year when I found myself unable to move my legs for 12 months. At times, I was terrified, but the kindness of others gave me the courage I needed to battle my way back and stand again. The support of my families and friends was unwavering, and for that, I will be forever grateful. At 17, as I learned to walk again, I was reminded of the strength we all must hold within ourselves to move forward, even if the mountain that lies ahead seems impossible to climb. Class of 2020, now is our time to show the world that regardless of the circumstances, we have the fortitude to move forward. United, we will stand and show the world that the class of 2020 has perfect vision and with it, we can paint a beautiful and colorful world. And coming up, New Hampshire's own American Idol, Alex Preston joins us from Nashville with an original song picked just for the class of 2020. Also from principal to game show host, how he's making sure his seniors are staying connected. Plus the fathers who made sure their daughters still had a prom night. And later, our keynote speaker, Tom Bergeron, not only has some advice to share, he's hoping for some from you as well. 